welcome Abi Joma Onyato tonight. Supreme Court dismisses Murtala Nyako's appeal, seeking to be reinstated as governor of Adamawa State. NJC recommends two judges for dismissal as acting chief justice of Nigeria challenges judges to be more open in the discharge of their duties. INEC alleges high infraction of electoral laws in the River State Legislative rerun polls, with states call for the establishment of Electoral Offences Tribunal, and gunmen kill 10 soldiers and a gendarme at the military post in northern Burkina Faso. On business news tonight, Debt Management Office defends federal government's plan to borrow 2.36 trillion naira to fund the 2017 budget deficit. On sports news tonight, respite for the Super Falcons as federal government releases fund to pay their outstanding allowances and bonuses. Hello, I'm Ibrahim Adran from the nation's capital. Minister of Environment Amina Mohammed gives account of our stewardship in Nigeria as she gets set to step in as Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. The Supreme Court has dismissed the appeal filed by former governor of Adamawa State, Mr. Murtala Nyako, seeking for his reinstatement as governor of the state. Mr. Nyako had approached the Apex Court, and he approached the Apex Court to order his reinstatement after a court ruled in his favor that his impeachment by the State House of Assembly was illegal and ordered that his entitlements as governor while his tenure lasted should be paid to him. Delivering his judgments, the lead justice Muhammad Musa states that the request sought by the former governor at the Apex Court had already been withdrawn by a counsel in the lower court. It was an interesting judgment. It's actually what we expected because what they have uh, delivered this morning represents the true and correct position of the law. Without even going into the merits of the case, you heard the justices say that the particular relief which they are seeking in this court, they withdrew it in the court of appeal. First and foremost, there was no proper appeal before this court. Forget about all the noise that the appellant has been making about this case that is going to be reinstated. He knows that the aspect of the reinstatement, he withdrew it in the court of appeal. We were there in the court of appeal when that was withdrawn. So we found it very surprising that this, his same lawyers, the very same persons who withdrew that particular relief, also filed this appeal again to contain the same thing they had abandoned. It was a well reasoned out decision. Comments have been made about withdrawal, but it's also necessary to point out why did counsel at the Court of Appeal withdraw that contentious six relief. He acknowledged at the Court of Appeal that his tenure has expired, and that was the basis of withdrawal of that relief at the Court of Appeal. So therefore, there was no grounds of appeal whatsoever before the Supreme Court, and uh, that has been decided. The National Judicial Council has recommended the dismissal of Justice Uba Ononoba of the Abia State High Court of Justice and compulsory retirement from office as Nasir Ugumi of Zavamfara State High Court of Justice with immediate effect. He was recommended for dismissal to the governor of Abia State following allegations that he signed two different orders without due diligence. The NJC recommended Justice Nasir Ugumi for compulsory retirement after he failed to deliver judgment almost 23 months after the final address by all counsel in a suit, contrary to the constitutional provisions, that judgment should be delivered within a period of 90 days. And the time has come for the judiciary to be more open, to boost public confidence, as well as remove any negative perception about the judiciary, and that's according to the Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, who says that the media play a vital role in enlightening the public about the judiciary. The CJN was speaking at a conference in Abuja to assess the performance of the courts in 2016. Our correspondent, Amaka Ukafo, reports. Justices of the Appeal Court, drawn from various divisions across the country with their counterparts from the Supreme Court at a two-day annual end-of-year conference aimed at X-raying the performance of the court in the year 2016. Host of the event, President of the Appeal Court, Justice Zainab Bulkatua, 
commended the justices for remaining resolute even in the face of the many challenges that confronted the judiciary this year. Allegations and petitions were leveled against the courts, which ordinarily would have demoralized one. But you all exhibited a great spirit of comradeship and your resolution and determination to adjudicate with, ut with utmost fairness and justice restored and preserved the public's confidence in the judiciary as the last hope of the common man. The acting chief justice says the challenges confronting the judiciary is an opportunity for the judiciary to reaffirm its commitment to the rule of law and its independence. Let me quickly add that the battle for the soul of the judiciary can only be fought and won from a position of integrity, judicial independence, and fairness in the dispensation of justice to all who come before you. He however says the judiciary has to be more open to the public as a way of improving the perception of the public as far as it concerns the judiciary. We must also cautiously move away from shielding the courts from the public. This undoubtedly has to, as its own risk, to urge you to consider invoking your inherent power of contempt where there are such violations or infractions in respect of matters that are subjudicial. This two-day event is expected to allow the justices to do a post-mortem of the year 2016 and also plan ahead for 2017. Amaka Okafor, Channels Television News. Despite the recent attacks by Boko Haram insurgents in Borno and Adamawa states that claim several lives, the Minister of Defence, Mansur Dan Ali, says the terrorists have been seriously weakened by troops of the Nigerian military. The Defence Minister was speaking during the passing out ceremony of 99 officers of the Direct Short Service Course 25 at the Nigerian Air Force Base in Kaduna State. Mr. Dan Ali gave the assurance that the federal government is committed to building capacities of the Nigerian Armed Forces. The arrival of the Minister of Defense, Mansur Dan Ali, kickstarts the colorful event with a parade. 99 of them in total, all drawn from different academic disciplines, including medicine, engineering, pharmacy, and piloting. For six months, they were subjected to rigorous physical fitness and weapon training to develop their endurance level, while also receiving lectures on counter-terrorism operations. Addressing the newly commissioned officers, the defense minister tells them to be prepared to play their part in defending the territorial integrity of the nation. Let me say here that you may be recalled at all times to make sacrifices to ensure the peace and stability of our country. This call will require you to speak courage, commitment, and patriotism in discharge of your duties. As you may be aware, the armed forces of Nigeria have made tremendous effort to stamp out terrorism and insurgency the direct short service course is designed for graduates from approved tertiary institutions in Nigeria with the aim of transforming them into officers of the Nigerian Air Force. That's according to the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar. We are really happy to have them. We are expecting another 105 very soon in another six months, making it a total of about 210. And then in 2017, we are expecting that we'll have more again. Some are coming from NDA while we are training some locally here, especially the professionals. Given all that has gone into the training, the new officers seem combat ready for the new task of securing the territorial integrity of the nation with their newly acquired military skills. To discuss counter-terrorism strategies and the ongoing fight against insurgency in the Northeast, I'm now being joined on the News at 10 by an anti-terrorism expert, Group Captain Felix Ihenacho. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. 
Thank you very much indeed. Now, what's your assessment of um, the ongoing situation in the northeast from the point of view of counter-terrorism? How is it going? <clears throat> well, um, my point of view is uh, simply that um, a lot of steam has been taken off the, uh, 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 the Boko Haram uh, um, terrorists. However, I still feel very strongly that um, we've not been able to articulate the necessary strategic level um, architecture that will um, um, guide the, our fighters who are um, in the theaters of operation. What do you mean? Well, what I mean exactly is this. Um, um, Boko Haram terrorism, as it is, is, is an asymmetric threat. And therefore, we, are not, um, we have not fashioned the comprehensive security um, response that will deal adequately and conclusively with this problem. And that is why each time um, the public will seem to say, oh, um, we hear we've uh, defeated Boko Haram, and then suddenly we are hearing uh, bombings taking place, we are hearing some officers have been uh, ambushed and killed by Boko Haram when we thought um, it's all over. So it's not, um, uh, this is the reason why it is it appears as if we are double speaking. No, we are not double speaking. Our soldiers are doing a great job and they are doing what they are supposed to do. However, it's like because we don't have this comprehensive security response, now the elements that will complement the um, efforts of the military in dealing with Boko Haram seem to be taking the back stage. They don't seem to realize that they have a role to play because we don't have a national architecture that will define the role they have to play. But we, we have yeah. been talking about this for a while. I mean, the last couple of months that, yeah. you know, that it shouldn't be reactionary. We should actually try to prevent the attacks from coming up. Yeah. And there are other strategists who have said we need this particular plan. So how best, do, how should we start? Is it lack of advice or what do you think you know, is the reason why we don't have that so plan you are speaking about? Well, I, the reason why we don't have it is that it, obviously we don't seem to have the political will to put that plan in place. You see, we, that plan is pre predictive and uh, it's not reactive if we have it in place. There are other actors, plenty of actors, including the political level actors majorly, who have a role to play in this. So if we have that um, national architecture, this natural, na national architecture will define the role the various elements in our society we play to um, have a comprehensive uh, security um, response to Boko Haram uh, threat. Okay, finally now, yes. the, the humanitarian aspect of all this obviously is the plight of the IDPs. Yeah. You have some of them returning home only yeah. to find out that attacks are happening again. Yeah. So even if the attacks can't be prevented, what's being done to, pr to protect those who have come back home who were promised that everything was going to be different you know, second time around? What do you think should be done to secure those who are actually within the area at the moment? Okay, what I think uh, we should do is to have an af after action plan in place. This after action plan will also um, encompass what uh, we call measures of effectiveness of what we are doing so far. So with this, we'll be able to um, see what we have done so far, have a, uh, an assessment of its effectiveness and how we need to deepen or vary such actions. So that um, at the end of the day, when these people come in, um, there will be when we say this, is, this place is safe, they are sure that it is absolutely safe. And like I say again, this umbrella, which I describe as the national architecture, will have elements of this, you know, we have uh, like measures of effectiveness, we have cells that will be de de determining that, we will have um, 
um, um, like um, the role which the uh, the governors, the political actors in that specific area will have to play to ensure that the, um, the returnees are ensured of their safety. All right. Yeah. Um, Group Captain Felix Ehenacho, thank yeah. you for sharing your thoughts with us. On thank the you news very much tonight. indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And in part two, after the break, Minister of Environment Amina Mohammed gives account of her stewardship as she prepares to step into her new position as Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. That's in a moment. Stay with us.